Hello. I think I bounced the camera. Sorry about that. Welcome back to Wild Sun Art Studio. My name is Robinson. I have a lovely video for you that is, um, I'm probably going to have to make it in two parts because there's just a lot to get through. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share as you would like to do. I would like it. I hope you like it. So we are going to make a sort of a background paper, um, which a person could use for postcards or um, artist trading cards or greeting cards or the cover of a journal or the pages of a journal or yeah, there are a bazillion ways to do this. We are going to be using a grocery bag. Ta-da! And I took some, I've done this before, and it's kind of like faux leather. And I was looking at the channel Le Café Craft, and um, it was wonderful to hear her voice. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm getting this right. This is a woman who speaks native French, I think. And um, so she was doing the video in English, and it was really fun to listen to her French accent in American English. It was great. So these were all, I was taking notes on all the things she did. And one of the things, I know Pam from the Paper Outpost has also done this. And uh, I don't know, I've seen a couple of other videos that all do this. They, they do the whole wrinkling of paper thing um, to help get that kind of worn out leather look. By the way, this is how I cut open paper bags um, so that I get the most of the paper that's flat. So I take a sliver off the bottom there. That's why I took notes on the bottom because I knew what I knew I wasn't going to use it. And then I cut that part off, and then I cut this side off. So the bottom of this bag, right, that has all the folds and it's kind of gronky to work with, I don't use, so blah, blah. Um, anyway, I was listening to the Le Café Craft woman, and she used BioSilk Silk Therapy Conditioner. And I know Pam has done this at the Paper Outpost. Um, after you wrinkle it up, you put conditioner on it and it helps the heavy brown paper of a big grocery bag um, kind of get more flexible and have that kind of suede, that really soft, um, silky uh, um feeling in your hands and I was thinking I should try this I should do this see this this huge piece of paper that you get it's very exciting I'm going to cut this in half because this huge piece of paper is vaguely unmanageable right up to that divot kind of right between the two halves. Just cut that in half like that. And then you have two pieces. They're generally the same size. And this is a project, yes, that has to be one-sided because this side does not have any printing on it, but this side does. Oh, and I wanted to show you, I also do this. One of the halves is gonna have the doubled paper where they glued the bag together. Um, and I just cut that right off. It's not even worth dealing with yeah, crunchiness. I'm sure I could do something with this. And I was, if I was good, like Pam at the paper outpost, I would make it into something artistic. But yeah, I'm not gonna do that today. So anyway, I decided that I would not use the hair conditioner. Um, apparently glycerin does something similar. 
um, to make the, the feeling of the crumpled paper be softer and more like suede because I want to do some rubber stamping. And I just thought this could get complicated. I don't even want to go there. So the first part is you cut open a brown paper bag. And the second part, big noise, is you crumple it up. Now, I did this a whole lot of times, and I actually thought it would not be so much fun for you to listen to that noise. So I, I, um, I, I crumpled it up and smoothed it out and crumpled it up again. And so you put it in a ball and you really, you know, squish it uh, a whole bunch of times. And yes, it was the Low Cafe Craft woman who showed me this. You can take a, you know, a key card thing and kind of iron the paper a little bit. So I thought that would be cool. Now she used, oh, I just dropped a whole pile of paper cuts. I can't move. That's the wheels of my chair. Let's squish the paper cuts. So you could also iron, by the way. You can also just go heat up an iron and do this a little bit too. Now, the traditional way that I've seen a bunch on YouTube is that you take, it's too far away, you take a stamp pad, like maybe a, uh, who do they call it? A Tim Holtz, you know, the, the brown. Um, this would not need the, the instructions I'm about to give you, but, but the Tim Holtz, uh, <sighs> oxidized color, whatever. Um, this has plastic on it, so I'm not really going to make a, a mark, but what they do is they take their ink pads and very lightly go over the paper and um, the Le Cafe craft woman did it in brown because a lot of leather tans out to be brown. Um, you could do it in red or blue or pink or green. Um, I decided not to do that because I don't think I have any stays on um, colors and all I have is black and I didn't really need this to be black. I'm going to be doing some embroidery on this and I didn't want the, the Tim Holtz colors, the Ranger colors aren't um, like stays on, they're not permanent. And I really, really did not want to have painty hands while I was sewing. I didn't want the inks to get onto the um, embroidery and yeah. So I'm not going to do that. This is a little, I'm talking myself into, this is just going to be a little bit different. So stage one is crumple up your paper. Stage two is take some rubber stamps and rubber stamp your paper. I think it's probably a good idea to um, have your images going in all kinds of different directions. you're seeing me. So I'm not going to go through actually covering this page with images because that would take a long time and my camera for whatever reason it decided um, really likes to stop at 28 minutes or something. So I can't go that long. hands and trees there's some trees outside my house well all of my trees I feel strongly about I have some cedar trees 
Um, there are a whole bunch of evergreen trees. I think there are elm trees. I'm not really sure. So I'm going to keep going with this after I finish making the video. But this is it. Just, um, I recommend stays on ink if you have any. If you don't, you could, and I don't know where my can of spray is, but there's that spray, um, what's it called? Fix it if spray, fix it, F I X I T V, something like that. You can get it at a local hardware store. It's it's not that special. Um, you know, like you don't have to go to an art store. It would be at an art store if you have one locally, but I think the hardware stores have it too. Um, yeah, you could you could spray a little fixative. Fixative sprays are often used with like uh, charcoal pencils and pastels and stuff when you want to put work on the picture later and put it back in your portfolio or in your big book um, and carry it around. And that makes the papers front and back rub against each other, and so you end up getting the pastels all over the place. If you spray fixative on it you can still it's called workable fixative that's what it is Ooh, that's kind of cool um let's see if i can show this to you see right there how the wrinkles of the pa brown paper didn't let the ink settle in everywhere so that's kind of cool so we keep doing this and you take all of your rubber stamps that you have either carved or it's fine to use rubber stamps that other people have made too. And you stamp all over the paper in whatever thickness and intensity you like. Um, you, could, you could make them sort of spread out. I mean, you know, you could make four different papers and try all kinds of things. Um, I do recommend this stays on. Yeah, I have this really cool... See, isn't that pretty? Um, crafty Individuals. I thought this was Tim Holtz. Anyway, they are like stamps and tickets and postmarks and stuff. Very cool. So I was thinking of using those too. Um, and then get out your handy dandy collection of floss. And you choose some colors. I'm choosing blues and grays. Surprising, eh? And what I am going to do is probably just a running stitch right now. Should I be able to find my thimble? Where'd it go? It was here. I got it out on purpose. Oh, I hate... Oh, God, there it is. So I'm not going to knot the end of my um, thread. And... I'm just going to put it to there and be gentle with the thread so I don't pull it through. You can, I don't know what I did with my awl, but I also brought that out specially just for you. You can take an awl and in a magazine or a piece of foam or something, um, you know, draw out the line of ins and outs. But I decided I would just use a little bit thicker uh, needle. Um, I'm using all six strands of floss too, just to make it a little bit. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing about the sewing that I just thought of. 
if I'm going to use these for postcards, do I have a postcard handy? Nope. But it's, you know, four inches by six inches. Oh, here is a postcard. So like here. I don't want to make big stitches because it would be hard to, um, like they, they would, they would lose the effect. They would lose the visual effect of uh, the stitches if I make them so big that they're basically bigger than the artist trading card. The artist trading cards are two and a half inches by three and a half inches, the size of a size of a playing card or a baseball card. Um, yeah, so we don't. Uh, want to lose the effect of the stitches. Now, in my many years of experience, um, you could make a chain stitch. You could make a blanket stitch. You could... Anything you can do on fabric, you can do on paper. You just have to be gentle. And for the most part, see, it's okay if I wrinkle this up, um... You want to make one stitch at a time. Now there are four holes all at the same time. The thing is, it's just really easy to tear the paper if you take on too much. You can't like tear cotton cloth that easily. But um, yeah, so you just have to kind of take the stitches slowly. This is ridiculous doing four or five stitches at once. So just breathe deeply and go one stitch. Um, you can do an in and out at a time, but sometimes I have to go in on one stitch and out on a separate stitch. So you just yeah, it's a slower process than working with um, some kind of cloth. Uh, the other thing that you can do with these is you could use fusible interfacing on the back and put like a piece of muslin, you know, like iron a piece of fusible interfacing and then iron a piece of um, muslin on that. And that could work. So there's no knot on this end and there's no knot on this end. And that's just going to be what it is. And when I end up cutting things out, um, what I will do is, let's see, let's use this medium blue. Um, when I... Uh, yeah, cut out the cards or the book cover or whatever I make out of this. Um, I might take a little glue and kind of glue it, or you can turn it over and you could glue the last stitch just to make sure. Like, what if I was cutting out something that was this wide? I could glue it right there and glue it right there. And then it wouldn't move on the front and you wouldn't see the glue. And so you've kind of anchored everything down. Um, I keep trying to remember when I did this before. What else? I put, oh, you know what would be fun? And you could do this with just about anything. You could use wax crayons you could use watercolor i don't know why you couldn't use watercolor um markers or permanent ink markers like a sharpie or a well, whatever um and you could draw and if you have kids or grandkids you could just say hey let's cover this gigantic opened up brown paper bag and have them make circles or 
trees, you could use symbols, ask the kids, or ask your own inner child. Um, you know, like, what do I really love? Um, as I was saying, I love my trees outside my house, and I very often greet them in the morning and in the evening. Um, and I say hello to them, and I blow them kisses, and so you could draw um, a picture of your house or your trees or your grandchildren or your parents or mm, your dining room place settings or clocks or gears or, I don't know, butterflies or plants or whatever you like. And... Um, you could just draw all over the picture. It's probably better to do the drawing in one of the first, maybe even the very first thing you would do. Because drawing over the rubber stamps might sort of confuse your brain and you'd think, oh, I, I shouldn't draw across the rubber stamp. So why don't you draw first? You could draw with anything. You could draw with pencil and then do this workable fixative spray over the top. Let it dry for however long they say to dry. And um, and then start doing the dimensional things like sewing on a brown paper bag. Um, so we're getting close to the end of this video. What I'm going to do is keep working on it and come back and do another video with you. Um, and do some more things on the paper. So here's the deal. You can do the things I show you how to do. You could also do any number of things you already know how to do. If you have techniques with, with drawing, painting. You might want to save painting till after like one of the last things you do. I mean, there's no reason why you couldn't take acrylic paint, you know, and splatter on top of this or, but whatever you do, you can do what you already know how to do. You can do what I'm teaching. You can do a little bit of what I do and a little bit of what other people do and some weird technique you've never done before that somebody else has. Um, the idea is to fill this crumpled paper, um, which has some body to it. Um, it won't tear unless you really go after it. Um, sometimes it tears around the edges when you're crumpling. So by the way, be careful about the edges, sort of crumple those first and then go into the center and crumple. Um, and then when you're smoothing everything out, be really careful when it's like this, it's kind of easy to hurt. So take it really gently and smooth that out. Um, yeah, so I'm going to finish the rubber stamping here, rubber stamp the whole paper, and then I'm going to finish sewing and I'm going to try some other, I think I would like to try a blanket stitch and I might do some feather stitches or make little embroidered leaves. Oh, that would be so fun. And then I'll think up some other things and we can work on this again. And then maybe in the third video, once everything is kind of finished, um, We'll talk about how to cut it in shapes for postcards or artist training cards or greeting cards or the cover of your latest journal. So, my blessing for you today is that you have calmness in your life, that there are places of space and breathing and um, actually making art without any noise, no radio, no music, no anything. Just really allow your brain to 
wander back and forth between the hemispheres and have a lovely time and let whatever comes up comes up. Um, I've been doing this a bunch lately and it's really important to have this much time, like a lot of time, to let all the stuff bubble to the surface because it's hard to deal with stuff we can't hear. And when I've got um, my computer on and my phone on, I can't always hear. I mean, sometimes it kind of sparks stuff that's going on in my head, but um, it's also really good to just be calm, be quiet, and um, listen to what your heart and soul are talking about. May we all have lots of space in our lives. Sparkly, sparkly. So have a great day and I'll be back. Bye.